Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a very basic uh, Blender VFX tutorial. Uh, now this is actually the first VFX shot I ever did inside of Blender. Uh, this was really helpful for me, so I hope you guys learned something. Now down in the description below, you can actually download the footage I am going to be using inside this video, along with my uh, blend file if you're interested. Now to get started, first we're going to need some paper and a sharpie. We're basically just going to be creating a little surface that we can actually uh, track onto. Next, we just need to make uh, nine little dots across the paper. I like to do a three by three uh, little sheet on the uh, piece of paper. Uh, I also like to put little crosses uh, in between those dots just to add a little bit more detail. Once that is done, we just need to film our footage. Uh, now you do want to make sure that your footage is as uh, still as possible. You don't want it to be as shaky, uh, but you still want to move around and everything. Uh, what helps with that, I actually have a phone gimbal now uh, that kind of removes some of the shakes and everything. This is the result I got with my footage, so if you're doing your own footage, just try to match that as close as possible. Now that we have that, we are ready to jump inside of Blender. Okay, so now that we have our footage, we are actually ready to bring it inside of Blender itself. Uh, so I'm just going to come up here to the VFX tab, Motion Tracking. Uh, then I'm just going to open up our clip. Okay, once that is inside of Blender, you will notice that the colors are off. So to change that, let's just go to the Render Properties down to Color Management, and instead of uh, Filmic, we're going to change it to Standard. So now you can see that's fixed our actual colors. Uh, next, we can actually set the start and end keyframe. You'll notice that by default it's 1 to uh, 250. Uh, but if we hit the set scene frames, uh, you'll see that my clip actually goes to uh, 297. Uh, now Blender does this weird thing. If I actually come to the end of the clip here, uh, you'll notice that the very last uh, frame is actually blank like this. Uh, and that's just something weird that Blender does with the set scene frame. So I just like to uh, hit this little arrow right here. Uh, to make the frame count one less, uh, that should fix it. So now if I actually scrub throughout this footage, you will notice that it's very choppy. Uh, even on good hardware, it will be choppy. That's just something Blender isn't really good at uh, at the moment. So if we come back to the first frame, uh, we can actually come up here and hit the uh, this prefetch button. Uh, this basically bakes all of the frames of the video into our cache. Uh, that just basically speeds up the process of the video. You'll notice that it's done prefetching when this little bar down here is all the way blue. Uh, that's when you know it's done. Now, if for any reason your video actually isn't uh, being cached all the way, uh, so let's say there's a little gray part over here, uh, what you can do is actually come to Edit, Preferences, uh, and then we're going to go to the System section. Uh, and down here in the Video Sequencer, you can see this Memory Cache Limit. Uh, by default, I think it's set to somewhere around 4,000 or something. Uh, basically, this is the uh, megabytes that it's going to use. Uh, so for me, I just set it to half of my RAM. My RAM is 16 gigs, so I just set mine to 8 like that. So we can just exit out of that. Next, let's actually start motion tracking. Uh, so first of all, we're just going to come uh, kind of zoom in right here. These uh, are our tracking dots that we made earlier. Uh, we can see the pattern size, search size, motion model, and match. Uh, so if I just hold control and then click, you can kind of see what's happening. And then if we hold alt uh, and then hit S, we can see the search area. So like I said before, this is the search area. Uh, this is basically the area where uh, Blender is going to search for whatever is in this box. This little box in the center is actually the pattern size right here. Uh, you can see that we can change this around and everything. Uh, but also, if we get back out of that and change around these values, you can see that it changes it like that. Uh, so right now, for mine, I'm just going to set this to 40. And then maybe the search size to a 100. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so I ended up going with a 32 for my pattern size and an 81. Uh, basically, you just want to play around until you get a uh, big enough pattern size that it encompasses your whole uh, dot. Uh, and a small enough search size that it's not going to really affect uh, the tracking at all. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete that. Uh, next is the motion model. Uh, for this, you don't really have to worry about it now since we have uh, so many good tracking markers, we don't really need uh, to worry about this. For the match, I always find that uh, previous frame actually works better than keyframe, uh, so make sure to change that. Next, we want to make sure that normalize is uh, checked. Uh, now, I don't really know what this does. I just know it leads to better tracking, uh, so I just keep that on. Finally, before we go ahead and start tracking, uh, let's come to this tracking settings extra. Uh, we want to set this correlation to be a 0.9. This basically means that Blender has to be 90% sure that the tracker is correct, uh, or it will stop tracking the actual point. Okay, so now that we are on frame one, we can actually go ahead and start tracking. Uh, let's first of all hold control again and just click in the middle here. Uh, you will notice that we have added a tracking dot. If you want a, a closer look at that, uh, you can actually select this uh, track uh, little menu over here. That gives you like a zoomed in version. You can also move it around and stuff. It 
just a little tip there. Okay, so now that we have our first tracking dot on there, uh, we're just going to go ahead and add all the others. So again, you just want to hold control, then click at all of our dots, trying to be as uh, center as possible. Uh, for these little crosses, you do want to be in the uh, center uh, as much as possible. So you can actually come over here and make sure it's in the exact center. Okay, so now I have uh, tracking dots on all of our little dots on the paper. Uh, now let's just hit A to select all of these. And since we're on the first frame, we can just go ahead and hold control and hit T. And you can see that the uh, trackers are actually uh, starting to track throughout our scene. Okay, as you can see from mine, uh, all my trackers made it to the end. This is a really good sign. Uh, you can kind of come through out here and go throughout all of them. Make sure that none of them go off or anything. Make sure that they all stay uh, kind of on their dot. You can also see down here, uh, basically, if any point goes crazily above it or below, uh, kind of like this. But as you can see, I don't have any anomalies or any tracking markers actually going off the paper, uh, so we are good. Next, we actually need to solve our camera motion. Uh, this will allow Blender to actually tell where the object is in 3D space. So let's go to the Solve tab. Uh, we're going to set it to be keyframe. Uh, a and B are basically just keyframes that Blender uses to actually correct, uh, make the solve. Uh, we want to refine the focal length, K1 and K2. All this does is basically just going to uh, tell Blender to try to find what uh, camera settings we are using. Uh, next, we just want to go ahead and solve the camera motion. So once that is finished uh, solving, we can actually see we got our solve error up here. Uh, now for mine, I got a 0.21, and that is actually really good. You want to keep it as low as possible. Um, I recommend anything below a 0.3 is very good. So if for any reason you're getting a solve error greater than this, then I highly recommend you go uh, look throughout your trackers. Uh, really make sure to see if all of them stay on the exact point. You can actually just click on one and kind of scrub throughout the clip and look over here to make sure that they uh, do stay in that one location. So now we're actually ready to set up our tracking scene. Uh, I'm just going to go in the solve panel, scroll down, and then set up tracking scene like that. Uh, you can see up here it's kind of made a little uh, plane and cube. Uh, so that is looking good. But you will notice that our orientation is off. This plane should actually be on our table. Uh, but if we scrub out, you can see that it's not. Uh, so a way we're going to change that is to come to the first frame again. Uh, then we're going to go to this orientation tab over here. Uh, we're going to select three points. Uh, you can just select whatever three points are on your floor. Uh, so since we made this just a uh, paper, all of those planes are going to be on our floor. So I'm just going to select a random three and hit floor like that. Uh, you will notice that it's kind of uh, gone a lot of crazy. So if we want to view that better, let's just select two of these points and set the scale like that. So now the plane is actually on our floor, uh, but it's not really aligned a nice way. So to align it better, we're going to set this middle point to be our origin. Just set the origin like that. Uh, and then since we did a grid form, uh, we can actually set our uh, Y axis. So I'm going to select this uh, little point right here. Now you can either set a X axis or Y axis. I usually just always stick to setting the Y axis. So let's just set that. Now if we come up here, we can see that our floor is defined and we actually have uh, it kind of following our table uh, along there. Okay, so now that we have this, we can go ahead and go into the layout tab. Uh, and let's actually go to the camera view just to see what we have. Uh, let's play this. Okay, so that is looking pretty good. Uh, you will notice if I scrub throughout here, you can see that our plane kind of sticks to the floor of the table. So that is uh, what we're wanting. Uh, let's just go ahead and delete this cube. We don't really need it for now. Uh, so just delete it like that. Okay, so now let's actually place in our object uh, into our scene. Uh, now for this, I'm just going to stick with a basic object. Uh, let's just add Suzanne, the monkey like that just scale her up a bit like that uh, and then i'm just going to hit one uh sorry three on my numpad i'm going to hit r to rotate uh, about right there and then if we go into wireframe mode we can actually see where our plane is resting uh, and that's right on here along the screen little line so if we just hit g and then z to move it up uh, we can just rest it on that little line and now if we come into solid view again we can actually see that uh, our monkey is actually resting on the plane itself okay so that is looking good uh, one thing I do want to uh, bring up real quick is that we can actually see our tracking markers and see that in the scene uh, right now we can't but if you want to enable that you can come up here and then go into motion tracking and then the these little uh, empties right here, those are actually our tracking dots. If I come into uh, the camera view and then go into wireframe, you can actually see that all of these empties are where our tracking dots are. So that's just a better representation of uh, where our actual paper is inside 3D viewport. 
Okay, so now let's go into the rendered view uh, just to see what this is going to look like. Uh, we can see a few issues. Number one, uh, the lighting is off. And number two, we don't really have shadow in this scene. Now, this plane is actually set up to be a shadow catcher object uh, by default inside of Blender. But since we are in EV, we actually can't see any shadows. Uh, so we need to switch over to cycles. Let's just go ahead and do that. I'm going to render all my GPU. Now you will notice uh, we do have our plane here now. Uh, but number one is not having any shadows on it and also we can see its actual outline and everything and we don't want that. Uh, so what we can do is actually get this ground uh, object and put it in the foreground collection. Uh, now we can actually see its shadow but we can still see this kind of gray mess right here. Uh, so the way we're going to change that is to come over to the render properties then go down to film and hit transparent. Once we do that, we can actually see that we now have transparency and this plane object is acting as we want it. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly uh, delete some stuff that Blender automatically set up uh, in the tracking scene. First of all, this background uh, collection, we're not gonna really use that, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. Also, we have this new background view layer, so let's just go to that and delete that. Also, if we go into the compositing tab, we'll notice a lot of nodes uh, were set up. Uh, we actually don't need a lot of these, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete these three up here, along with this render layers node right here. Uh, then you can just bring the movie clip over and then plug the image of the movie clip into the image of our alpha over. Now let's go back to the layout tab, and let's go ahead and render out an image. Now you will notice that the render is looking pretty good. Uh, we have our render layers with a transparent grip background uh, on top of our actual video clip. Now there are a few things that we can actually change around uh, to actually make this scene a little bit more realistic. Uh, first of all, we can see that the shadow is kind of going off the edge of the table here. So let's just change that. Uh, I'm going to select the table object right here. Then I'm going to go into edit mode by hitting tab. I'm uh, going to go into the edge select mode up here. Then select this little edge. Uh, then we can double tap G to move it on to our edge of here. Uh, you will notice that it's actually not perfectly straight along the table. So I'm just going to get out of edit mode. Then I'm basically just going to rotate this little pane by hitting R then Z, uh, Z to lock it to the Z axis. Next I'm just going to move it until it basically aligns uh, with that little edge of the table. Uh, you might need to zoom in to actually see it. Now let's go ahead and render that. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so here is the result that we got. Uh, we can actually see uh, the edge of the table actually goes along with our shadow a little bit better now. Uh, so that is looking very good. Uh, we can actually go ahead and exit out of that. Okay, so now we're actually ready to start compositing uh, our little monkey head with the video. First thing you won't really notice, but it is still true, is that the actual coloring of the monkey is a little bit off uh, compared to our background video. And that's actually because our uh, video that we shot has a different color space than the actual render layers. Uh, so an easy way we can do to change that is to come to the render properties. Uh, we're going to come down here to the color management, and you can see that it is set on standard. Uh, that's actually what our video is shot in, uh, but that is not what our monkey is uh, in. So what we need to do is to go change this from standard to filmic. Uh, and you can see that that's uh, brightened up the colors and just made the colors way more accurate. So now that we have it on filmic, let's just come to the compositing tab real quick. Now if we go ahead and look at the background of this, uh, this is what the filmic color space does. Uh, basically just livens up the monkey a little bit. But our background is very bright, so uh, what we actually need to do is just render out this render layers node. Uh, so to easily do that, we're just going to plug the image of the render layers into the image of the composite. Uh, this basically tells Blender that we're only compositing the uh, render layers and not the video. Uh, so let's go ahead and render that out to see what that looks like. Okay, so here is what that looks like. We can see that we only have the monkey and the shadow uh, along with the transparent background. Uh, but we actually don't have our video clip, so that's what we want. Uh, we can composite in the video clip after this. So let's exit out of that. Uh, next, we just want to go ahead and set the, some output properties. We're going to come over to the output properties section. Uh, we're going to set a new folder for all of these uh, files to go into. Now you do want to make it its own folder because we will be doing a lot of PNG sequences. So I'm just going to add a new folder and I'm going to name mine uh, image sequence. You can double click into that and then hit accept. Uh, next, we want to come down here and make sure the file format is on PNG, RGBA, uh, and then the compression is down to 0%. Uh, you do want to make sure it's in RGBA since we are using this little alpha channel right here. 
After that is finished, you want to make sure that you are in the film uh, filmic uh, view transform. So we are, and then we can just go ahead and render out our animation. Okay guys, so my render just finished. Uh, we can go ahead and exit out of that. Uh, then we can actually go ahead and uh, bring this render layers down here and just press M to mute that. Uh, let's just go ahead and bring in a image node. Just plug that in up there. Then we're just gonna go ahead and open up all of the images. Uh, we can just hit A to hit that, then open image like that. Uh, you should see that it automatically sets it to be a image sequence, uh, so that is looking good. We're just gonna place, uh, we're basically just gonna replace the uh, render layers with this image, uh, so just plug that there. Uh, and then we can plug this alpha over into our composite like that. So now if we look back in the background now, we can actually see that we have the monkey composited uh, on top of our movie clip, uh, but the colors are still off. So now we can actually come to the render properties, go all the way down, uh, and then instead of uh, the filmic uh, view transform, we can actually hit uh, standard. Uh, and so now that is the more accurate color. Finally, to render it out uh, into our final video format, we're just gonna come over to the output properties. Uh, we're gonna specify a new location for our uh, video. Once we have that, we can change the file format uh, to FFmpeg video. And then in the encoding section, we're gonna change the container to be an MP4. Uh, and then for the output quality, we're gonna set this to be high. Finally, we can just go ahead and come up here and render the animation again. Okay guys, here is our final result. Uh, I think it turned out pretty well. Uh, now for my scenes particularly, uh, the lighting actually worked out very well inside of Blender. I didn't really have to mess around too much uh, inside of that. Uh, but for any reason, uh, your lighting in your own scene uh, isn't that great. Uh, I just recommend downloading a HRI uh, off of HRI Haven and linking that into your scene. You can look up how to do that. Uh, I have other tutorials on my channel as well uh, of how to do that. Uh, so make sure to go check those out. But anyways, guys, hopefully this was uh, a good starting point for you and your VFX career. Uh, now, this was very basic, uh, just camera tracking uh, and basic modeling and stuff in our scene. Uh, so I hope you learned something from this video. Anyways, guys, uh, we have a Patreon and Discord. Links to those are in the description below. Uh, but anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Peace.